Ladies and gentlemen, AJ, that's great. How are you guys doing? You want me in the middle? Sure. I just went to the closest seat. Hey, guys. Hey, what's up, Tony Nigeria, hey. Big Old Belt Media. Now that it's all done, after all the different changes and moving parts that you had to do, how you feeling? Feeling fantastic. Uh, the show was a big success. We had ticket sales here in Chicago of over $1.1 million. I think it'll be within literally thousands. It'll probably be just behind Double or Nothing, but right there, we're both over $1.1 million. Uh, live ticket sales and the pay-per-view. I said if we hit 100,000 worldwide buys, I would feel it's a big success, and I feel very comfortable now based on the early digital numbers saying we did 100,000 worldwide buys and more, and I feel great about that. That's a big success for a new franchise, and we've always had growth on our pay-per-views year over year based on really strong word of mouth and, and trying to do good TV week to week to build them. And I, I think even with all the challenges here, the TV has been really strong the last several weeks. I'm really proud of the, of the work we've done. And to be honest, I've never been prouder of how a show has come together. And a lot of it comes to New Japan and their great re roster of talent and their great people. Uh, for me, being here quarterbacking it, it's been a challenge. And it's probably been other than the early shut down, locked down wrestling of 2020. This is probably the biggest creative challenge I've ever faced. And I think we came to come through and do a great show probably since Double or Nothing 2020. I can't remember being so proud of putting something together that came together so quickly and changed a lot from what it might have originally been. And uh, when we did the first lockdown pay-per-view. And, I, and um, so it was pretty special. And that first lockdown pay-per-view, the world title match for AEW was John Moxley versus Brody Lee. So I thought it would be a nice moment. We'll get Brody Lee out there at the end. Uh, with John as the interim champion, and that was cool. And Claudio, uh, Eddie, a lot of people close to Brody. Of course, Eddie had already stormed off because he was mad at Claudio and John. But uh, that was a real cool uh, night, and just a lot of things came together unexpectedly. But I'm really happy with how it all came together. I'm very grateful to New Japan for working with us, and it's been a great partnership, and I think we can do it many times over. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey. Tony, so let's talk Cesaro. I kind of want to get some Can we talk ideas. Claudio, please? <laughs> Claudio, excuse me, pardon me, pardon me. Um, so let's talk Claudio Castagnoli in terms of bringing him into AEW, what the process was like for that, and kind of how you feel adding him to the roster. Well, uh, I'll be honest. It's a really good question. I'm glad you asked. Thank you, Denise. So I asked uh, him about coming in actually before I knew for sure that Brian was out, but I had a pretty good idea that Punk would be out. And I could tell there were gonna be a lot of changes. I and mean, we already had a lot of injured people. I had no idea we'd have even more on the run up to the show. But uh, I just felt like it was actually the day after the forum, so it would have been June 2nd. I called and I, I did, had interest. There was definitely mutual interest, but at that point I felt like there was a good chance. I wasn't sure if it would be here or at another thing that actually I'd be interested to talk to you about uh, in a minute. Uh, but I wasn't sure if uh, he would be coming in here or Death Before Dishonor, July 23rd on pay-per-view in Lowell, Massachusetts, Ring of Honor's return event on Bleacher Report, our first Ring of Honor event on Bleacher Report. And I'm very excited about that and thank you to Bleacher Report and Warner Media for working with us to bring Ring of Honor back to pay-per-view after a very successful return at Supercard of Honor. So I figured there was a chance that if, if Brian made it back, that there was a good chance that probably he would have started at Supercard of, uh, excuse me, he would have started at Death Before Dishonor, and it would have been a great moment there, but I think for the crowd here, this was a, something very special, and, it, and I, as long as Brian's okay, that's the most important thing, and I think he will be fine, and uh, it was great to have a great moment here at Forbidden Door. So. Things worked out perfectly, so I was very fortunate. Um, I talked to Brian on the phone last weekend, and he told me he didn't think he wasn't. He just wasn't feeling 100%. And I, when he, as soon as he said that, I said like, I, 
that we're eight days from the pay-per-view, but if you're not feeling 100% today, don't even think about wrestling on the pay-per-view. Don't even think about wrestling at Blood and Guts, because he had been feeling really well. I talked to him in St. Louis on the phone, and he was doing great. And he was so optimistic, and he was like that fired up Brian Danielson we all know, right? He, was, he wanted to go. He was like, I feel great. And he hadn't done anything since Double or Nothing, and he really was optimistic. And then I didn't even want to take another chance as soon as he said that. So uh, he mentioned Claudio, and it's, I said it's funny because I have Claudio under contract. <laughs> and uh, I hadn't told anybody. You're the first person I mentioned it to. So, uh, but I think that's going to work out real nice for all of us. And you're going to be okay, and I mean, he's going to do great. And so it worked out. Thank you. As Stephanie from hey, Digital Steph. Spy. Um, so we had the AEW interim championship match going on last, but you also had the IWGP championship defend on the card. So was there ever a question of what the main event was going to be? And what was it like working that out with New Japan? And kind of how did you find it in general negotiating uh, finishes and who would go over uh, when putting together this card? It's a really good question. I've I was many times now, but now that it's done, I've equated it to like a submarine movie where there's two missile keys. I think being on site, I think I've been like the captain, but I think I've had uh, people working beside me that have had the same key and they can you know, veto power over stuff. So we put a lot of things in place here and have quarterbacked it from here in America. But Ghetto had really valuable input. It's very gratifying to meet him in person because uh, through the pandemic, we built this partnership through our mutual friend Rocky Romero. Uh, many great wrestlers have come in from New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I will. Why don't we step pick up from there, and uh, I will introduce you to the IWGP. But when uh, I'll pick up with you, and we'll talk at length, ladies and gentlemen. Still the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, Jay White. That's right, Tony. Doesn't that sound right? Still the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. Sounds pretty good. Jay White, is somebody going to come in and uh, put this up? Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, hey, uh, would, would one of you guys please uh, assist the champ? <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, look. That's... Look. I, I, thanks, John. No, no, he wants you to put it on the stand. Look, I clearly want it. Put it in this fucking thing. He puts it on the stand here. Face it out for beauty shots. It's okay. Thanks, John. I'm glad it's so amusing to you, John. But let me let me just recap what I've been through tonight. Adam Cole, Bay Bay, Cowboy Shit, Hangman Adam Page, Rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada. I just beat those three men. Three men that I know a lot of you and everybody watching, and I know even this man consider three of the best in the world. I just beat those three men in the same night at the same time. And I can't even get a little hand to put my IWGP World Heavyweight Championship in its fucking holder. My left arm's dead. I just went through a war and I still came out the champion. All I want is just somebody to be able to do that. I'm sorry. Me. I'm sorry about that. Sorry, I appreciate that. That's, that's not yeah, that personal. Yeah. But on that note of me beating those three at the same time, and I said this before and I'm going to keep saying this. From now on, when you talk about the greats, you make sure that you say my name first. Oh, there we go. Okay. You, please, I don't have these questions. If For I you. Do you have it's questions? Yours. The floor is yours. Uh, hi, Jay. Uh, Nick Hausman with Wrestling Inc. Uh, congratulations on your victory tonight. Um, do you want to continue to stick around AEW, or would you like to take your title back to New Japan Pro Wrestling now? What's, <sighs> what's your future look like, Jay? Well, if. Yeah, this, is, this seems to be a, a pretty big if. But if we can have someone that when I, when I come here and I successfully defend my IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, if we can have somebody that can, you know, be prepared and put this up here for me, I'll feel a lot more inclined uh, to come by. So I'm very easily pleased. Obviously, I don't ask a lot. It's just something like that, something like a chair sometimes. Uh, so to answer your question, would I like to? I don't know. But will I? I don't know, because this is how it works. I don't have to tell you anything. I don't have to give away anything. When you're the champion, when you're the guy that single-handedly sells out arenas like Madison Square Garden and United Center, you can kind of do what you want and show up when you want. So stay tuned, I guess. Uh, Jay, Colin from uh, Monthly Pro. Oh, sorry, it, was Pro nothing, it was nothing personal about, about this. No, I just, it's okay. You're no, okay. Just, it's, been, it's been a big night. And, uh, yeah. 
Go ahead, buddy. Jay, leadership of the Bullet Club, Bullet Club politics, they seem a little nebulous. It's just that I am, I, 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 GP, whatever, champion, grant. It's just, I just wanted a little hand to, to put that there. That's, and they say I'm erratic that's up it, here. That's it. That's it. Uh, do we, so, question. Well, you've, you've got the title, but the title of Bullet Club Supreme Leader perhaps seems a little nebulous, maybe more so after the events of tonight. Can you speak on that a little what bit? What does nebulous mean? Unclear, undefined. Undefined on who would be the, like, the best Bullet Club leader? Is that what you're saying? Mm, perhaps, yes. Can you tell me how old I am? You're not 30 yet. Thank you. We That's good that. enough. Can you can you lift off some of my list off the championships of one? Can you do that? Well, the U.S. Uh, IWGP title, uh, the World Heavyweight uh, Championship, uh, the uh, previous uh, championship, the IWGP Championship, several others, I'm sure. There we go. Intercontinental, IWGP well, Intercontinental, and then the Never Openweight Championship. That's five. That makes me the first and only. Grand Slam champion in New Japan, and like I said, like you've said, not even 30 years old yet. Shit, what, what's my record against Okada again? That's 4-1. What's my record against uh, your guy's favorite cowboy in singles action 2-0? Oh, if we add tonight to that, I don't know if we do that or not, that makes it 3-0. Oh. So when you're going to talk about best bullet club leaders, look at what I have done in such a short amount of time. I haven't even been in wrestling for 10 years yet. And you're going to put a question mark over who the greatest Bullet Club leader is? It's not even just as a Bullet Club leader. I'm the greatest, full stop. So of course I'm the greatest Bullet Club leader. Any other, any other questions? <sighs> sure, we can, yeah, we can keep going, you know? Jay, there are many, many stars from AEW that could not compete tonight. Uh, Tony already mentioned them, CM Punk, Brian oh. Danielson. Do you have any aspirations of stepping in the ring with big names like that? Um, I, I don't. I'm sure they have those aspirations because I am the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. So what, what, what would be my motivation for going after someone like a Brian Danielson? CM Punk, fair enough. He has that, well, he has it for now, but I guess Moxley could, you know, end up taking that from him. So maybe it would be Mox that I would have to, uh, I don't know, try and sort out a little dance with at some point uh but no I, I i'm not i'm not one of these guys and i say this time and time again you obviously haven't heard it because you're asking me this question i don't go out seeking matches especially any dream matches that term it really does make me sick so that's not something i go out to uh to pursue everybody pursues me everybody wants to be in the ring with me because look what happens you get in the ring with me and look it's sold out united center sold out madison square garden i'm the man people want me Oh, that's it. Oh, that was great. Thank you. A little bit of a rough start here with our little uh, championship holder, but we got there. Well, in the I end. take partial responsibility for that. Sorry hey, man, you, I'm, I'm sure you got a lot of things to, uh, to handle. Yeah, there I could do. have been anybody else here that was sat here doing nothing, and they still didn't want to come and help me. Sorry so. about that. We have a lot of Thank you, Chuck. It's always next time, huh? Thank you. Could have done without that. Great. Might want to keep those two from crossing paths. Uh, careful on the way out. He was pretty spicy. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, let me let me jump back in, AJ, and then we'll I'll get you before Mox comes in if I can, or I'll definitely get to you, okay, AJ? Uh, hey, so back to that. So it was really a cool experience getting into this together. Uh, there's probably nobody who could probably elaborate on it better than a person I've spent hundreds of hours on the phone with who's standing at the back of the room, who also wrestled his ass off tonight and is a huge reason this came together, and that's Rocky Romero, who deserves a big... I, he's been the person who's done hundreds and hundreds of phone calls and messages in between myself and Ghetto and with his own ideas, and he's as responsible for this as anybody, and there's no way we would be doing this right now if it wasn't for Rocky Romero, and I just think the world of him, so thank you, Rock. Appreciate you. It's been a pleasure working with you. It's been a pleasure working with him, and, and we've worked side by side to help 
you know, with, with get with Rocky here, he's been able to get feedback from me, ideas. So to your question earlier, before Jay White came in and, and was pretty rude, Steph, uh, uh, it's been a pleasure. It's been a big challenge, I think, on both sides because you know there's been injuries and stuff on both sides. When I finally met Ghetto last night, I don't think Rock, I don't think he'd mind me saying he came in and he said, "I'm sorry about the thing with Hiromu and some of the challenges." And I said, "I'm sorry about." CM Punk and Brian Danielson not being here, like you know, it's a, we, we, but but here I think it's going to work out great. I think we're going to together have one of our best shows for either company, and I think it was. So I, I'm really proud of what we did. I'm proud of what they did, and we came together and we had a great night, uh, AEW and New Japan. And again, it wouldn't have been possible without you, Rock. So thanks, man. Uh, AJ, the champ's here, but I promise I'm going to get to you, okay? But you guys might have questions for him, ladies and gentlemen. The interim AEW World Champion, John Moxley. Yeah. Here you go, John. Uh, Can I handle that? Yeah, you got it. I swallowed a lot of blood. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to get a sponsorship with Athletic Brewing, non-alcoholic beer, delicious. Give me some free shit. Can I try one of those? Oh, yeah, they're fucking awesome. Thanks, man. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Athletic Brewing, the beverage of champions. <laughs> See how good that sounds? You know? It's pretty good. So I just mostly just free shit is all I want, you know? You don't even have to pay me. Just give me a bunch of That's good. free shit. Hey, thanks. All right. Uh, and with that. First off, Will Washington, Fightful, congratulations, champ, uh, or interim champ, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, John, you once compared your previous win in Chicago at Wintrust Arena in Revolution 2020 when you first won the AEW World Championship to Christmas morning. Uh, and here you are now walking out of Chicago again, the AEW interim world champion how does this win compare to your previous win in Chicago? Life is uh, crazy, man. Every time you think like, you know, just in general, you think like the worst thing in the world happened. And then it turns out to be like, years later, you look back on it and say, oh, it's a blessing in disguise. Or the best thing in the world happens, or you think this is a big deal, you know? Like uh, you're with some, you're in some relationship, you think you're gonna be together forever. It turns out like that was fucking five girlfriends before you actually met the one you're gonna be together with or something like that. Uh, meaning like, uh, you know, I thought it was a pretty cool deal. Uh, last time I won a championship against Chris Jericho, actually in Chicago too. Yeah. I thought it s s seemed at the time like a, uh, kind of an end to a particular road or a particular story, but it was just the end of a very particular chapter that was like a bunch of a bunch of chapters ago. And this feels like this feels like the end of a particular journey that uh I didn't even realize I was on. You know, I thought there was a so so it's just another end of another chapter. But it feels like this feels pretty good, man. Like because uh the other, you know, time it was like, oh, okay, I'm pretty hot and fans are pretty with me and, you know, we're going with this and here's, I'm going to win the belt. That's pretty cool. You know, that always feels nice. This feels like a whole, this feels like I fucking scratched and clawed and fucking fought and not just in the wrestling ring, but in a lot of other areas of life. And, uh. This truly does feel like three years of fucking work in, uh, uh, in the ring, outside of the ring, in a bunch of different ways, in a bunch of different er areas that all seem like it somehow all led up to this that we didn't even see coming fucking three weeks ago or some shit. I, I don't even know if I was on a fucking card, you know, and now I'm in the main event. Well, I'm probably on the fucking You're card. On the card. Yeah, this motherfucker wasn't going to put me on a card. I am the fucking forbidden door and shit. This motherfucker wasn't going to put me on you the card. You were definitely on the card. Well, I was on the card. No, but, like, that, you know, that's another thing. Cause like, if, as soon as it was like, okay, you're in the main event against Tanahashi, I was like, of course I am. That, of course. Because it was, it was supposed to be, like, the whole time. That was my match. This is my shit, you know. Uh, 
And I fuck it. I love fucking AEW. I love New Japan. You know, I love professional wrestling, but I love both. And, you know, I'm so happy just to, even if I wasn't on the show tonight, it would have been cool to just sit back and go and be like, that's really cool that, you know, they were able to have a show together, you know, because it wasn't quite that, uh, there wasn't as much communication as Tony would tell you like a few years ago. But I thought that was stupid. And I'm like, these people are cool and these people are cool. Let's all just like, can't we just, you know, have some communication? So like if next year, you know, I'm not even, I don't even need to be on a, if we do a forbidden door next year, I don't even need to be on a show. I'll never like top this. This is like, just that it ha happened and being a main event is just, that, that in itself is crazy that able to pull that, this together. And man, and credit to Tony, I'm not just saying that cause he's sitting here. Like, I mean, it's really easy to fantasy book, you know, like you're reading a PWI in 1998 and it's WWF versus WCW and go, okay, so we're going to have Goldberg versus Austin, Rock versus Sting. And like, that's real easy to do, but to actually pull off a show like that with two companies and to put a card together and make it all work, timing and booking and travel and injury wise. And like, you know, we got hit by some injuries, you know, like Ishii and stuff to make all that actual to actually pull that off in reality and pull off a show like was pulled off tonight. It's a huge credit to both to both sides. It's, you know, just credit all around for I, my job was easy. You know, everybody else just p pulled off an incredible show tonight and just say you know i said it out there to the fans like just like do you man i'm so like what uh so fortunate to like be here and witness like this crazy like momentous occasion you know with all these i mean in this building you know you see michael jordan play basketball i'm sure the is that right that's yeah. right yeah right. that's right I'm sure there were fans watching Michael Jordan play basketball going like, we are seeing something really special, you know? And like, we're gonna be able to say like, we saw Jordan live and in person in his prime. And how many fans got to see Tanahashi live and in person today, you know? And Okada and Suzuki and, you know, not even to mention all the great AW talents, you know? So it's pretty, this is cool, man. It's crazy. So. Uh, you're, so to answer your question, everything's pretty fucking cool tonight. <laughs> pretty cool night. Hi, John. Steve Mielhausen from the Zone, and fantastic match tonight. And what's going on, Tony? How are you? Did the match? This is a match you've thought about for a long time. Did it live up to your own expectations? Oh man, it's just a freaking pleasure, man. Like to share the ring with you know just the. Uh, one of the absolute greatest in Tanahashi. I mean, like, it sounds real, uh, like a generic uh, answer, but just like, like what a pleasure. Just like, uh, it's hard to uh, really put in a words to it. Like my partner, Brian Danielson, put this much better than me, but he's like, you know, the feeling that, you know, I think we're wired similarly in that, like the feeling He's always chasing is like that feeling of being in the ring and like uh, when you're doing what you feel like you were put on earth to do, like the absolute pleasure of just being dialed in to doing like what you were here to do. And like the, uh, the pleasure of just like wrestling, man. And I've had it taken away from me for various reasons, you know, be it uh, without, you know, really getting into for whatever you know either I was hurt or I was in a place that uh you know the situation wasn't optimal or uh my life at the time wasn't optimal and I couldn't just uh just enjoy wrestling and it's like it's such a what a freaking like I was thinking that the other night I wrestled on a little show a few hundred people in uh dayton ohio and uh drove up just great crowd great show great match and uh wrestled speedball with mike bailey and uh for revolver and uh uh just uh had this great match great crowd whatever got in the truck afterward and was just driving home 
it was just like in such a good it was going home to my wife and my baby and like my baby's turning one having a little birthday the next day it was just like drinking one of these you know and enjoying I was listening to UFC playing at the time Yuri Projaka fuck yeah and I was just like in such a state of joy you know just like there's no money or ratings or any bullshit like just the act of wrestling that I get to do it you know and I'm just so black like I was just like man and like and I was thinking like there's like no fucking drug and I've tried them all trust me there's no drug that can compare to this you know and I get to like keep I get to keep doing this every day you know and just keep so to answer your question like Fuck yeah, what a feeling to just be out there, like, with Tanahashi, like, you know. But there was a lot of, a lot of fucking pressure. And I tried to be like, ah, it's all good, like, you know. Uh, pretty good at handling that kind of thing now, because I'm like, i kind of been there, done that, like. And my confidence is such right now. I'm feeling pretty fucking untouchable right now. Like, everything just seems to be all coming together all right at the right time and uh i mean like you got to replace you know big uh hometown guy in his hometown you know that's you know people came to see their hometown guy and you're not the hometown guy and uh you got to go in there against maybe the greatest of all time you know one of the greatest of all time uh and be in the main event of like this amazing show and you got to follow all these just top of the line like what a tough spot to be in you know and my dumb ass out there like really i'm in this fucking spot like you know i don't you know i'm not all that strong or all that fast or i can't do any flips and bullshit but i try really hard you know and that's what i did tonight so it would, uh yeah it was awesome man i'm just fuck, i'm feeling pretty good man yeah can we do aj aj has one for the champ aj you get john you're the last guy you earned it. Um, first off, my name's AJ from the AJ Awesome Show. Yeah, you are. <laughs> uh, with the Backpool Combat Club having new member after new member, like Wheeler Yuta and Claudio, uh, how has it affected your career in a good, in a positive way or a negative way to have more people surrounding you? Oh, it's the, it's the best thing, man. Like, that's another thing that's just like, this Blackpool Combat Club came together at just like this perfect time and it's just so good for me. And like, it just fits so perfectly. And like, for instance, Claudio, I mean, it wasn't even a question of like, like he's basically already, because it's a real thing, you know, it's not this act we're putting on, you know? He's a real student of Regal, and he's a real training partner of mine, former training partner for years. We were in developmental together. We traveled together a lot. <clears throat> uh, we've, you know, I said like, hey, you know, I said something once about like, hey, you gotta, we gotta bleed together if you're gonna be on my team. I, uh, I wrestled Claudio a million times. We have, I have busted him open on multiple occasions. You can go back and watch that shit on Peacock. I knocked his fucking teeth right down his throat. He wore adult braces for two years, you know? So we've been there. We've been down the road together, you know? Uh, I mean, he's, like, legitimately, like, part of the group. And, like, we're... And uh, to have that, like, I... You know, I just... I want to keep getting better. Like, I feel like right now is also, like, a jumping-off point. Like, I can... Like, this feels like the baseline I've been trying to get to, what I've been picturing in my mind for, like, three years. And it's all starting to kind of become a reality. And I'm like, man, this is, like... So here's the baseline starting off point. Like, imagine how good we could get. And I'm surrounded by guys, you know, I love to train, I love to learn, I love to get better. Uh, try a little, you know try stuff out i love helping other guys too you know so i have wheeler is like a young guy who's more talented than me to use my brain and experience and try to help him and help him get better and he's a great dude otherwise he wouldn't be in the group either we don't like we don't let assholes in the group 
and uh, to uh, to have a dude like that to be able to help him, but also have him push me because he's you know young and hungry and uh, all that. But also like to have Regal who doesn't let anything slide. If I you know, talked to him after this match, he had like two or three little things that I could have done better. You know, no congratulations or whatever. No, hey way to win the belt no it was like you know you could have done like three or four things but i like that i want you know i get plenty of congratulations i don't need that shit i need help getting better and uh so he doesn't let anything slide and he keeps me sharp and helps me get better and uh having claudio and brian uh who are like two of the greatest you know i mean brian in my book Brian Danielson is the greatest, prof- and, you know, people say, like, Tanahashi's one of the greatest ever, and, you know, Jericho's the GOAT, and we say all this, you know. Just for my money, in my opinion, the greatest professional wrestler to ever live, to ever do it in the ring is Brian Danielson. And it's crazy, because he's my partner. I get to, like, tag team with him, you know? And also, he's one of my favorite wrestlers ever. Like, my legit like on my top list of like two or three, four, or whatever, like he's in that group of like, oh, my favorite wrestlers to watch ever. And it's almost like there's two different, there's like my one of my favorite wrestlers to watch, Brian Danielson, who's like right up there with my all time favorites, like Bret Hart and stuff. And then there's like Brian, my friend, who's like all eco-friendly and shit, you know? That and you know he's like a good father and all this and you know we have similar interests and we talk and whatever. That's almost like two separate people and sometimes I gotta like pinch myself out there like I get to team with one of my favorite wrestlers like all of all time. That's pretty cool, man. So I mean, if there's ever a guy that's gonna push you and make you better and like you can't slack off when you're teaming with a guy that good, because you know you gotta. It pushes me. I wanna like be like oh I, I can keep up with Brian and you know I'm pretty good too sometimes you know like so I, it makes me want to push myself and then Claudio who's just as a physical I mean what can you I'm convinced he's an alien like there's no way that he's like that strong and that fast and also he's smart and he's nice and he speaks four languages and he's got this perfect crazy superhero body and like there's no way he's like it's crazy that he's uh, just his ability in the ring, and he's so good. Just one of the most perfect professional wrestlers to ever exist. So I got him pushing me, and we legit like like training. And uh, now to have Claudio here every week to be in a ring with him before the show, or you know, in the gym or whatever, working on stuff. Like I think we're all gonna push each other and make each other better. And I think you know, a year from now, like the guys in the Blackpool Combat Club, like, holy shit. So, like, with those guys on my side, to answer your question, I think it's just going to... I think it's going to be tremendous help to make it me hopefully better and, and reach another level. And it's friggin', it's cool, man, you know? Thanks, man. That was great. All right. so, I appreciate it. All good? Yeah, oh, cool. Thanks, All right. Good yeah, good. Uh, how do we get uh, I would like to see because this is last year check it out I'm going to do some fantasy booking alright six man tag right we got three dudes over here and on this side we got Darby Allen we got Sting and we got the great Muda how do we make it happen I don't know. You got to talk to the guys in the back. That's okay. He's in, he's in Noah, <laughs> You're lucky right? they like you so much in New Japan. If I said like, that, how do we do yeah. it? I don't know. I think Who's he works for the other. He works for. Isn't he like the president? Right, somebody of Somebody make a call. Is he not the president of Noah? <laughs> yeah. I think Let's he's the president of Noah. I don't know if that's everybody right. would love to see that. Gato would love to see that. Who wouldn't love to see that? It could be good. Great I don't motor. know. I, you know, and it could Stan, be good. Well, I think maybe something people would want to see. Face paint, dudes with attitudes, to be pretty sick. So one guy who can get away with that. I'll leave you with that. There's one human. Let's try to make it happen. Also, yeah, maybe. Also, Eddie Kingston would like to fight Jun Akiyama. I would like to do that. Where do we do that? that? I can, can do, do that. that I, that'll do we that in do America. That. I can Akiyama. Hey, Eddie Kingston's looking for you, my friend. And if you want to bring Sakuraba, too, you know, 
maybe I'll go with him. <laughs> Some Sakuraba action. The Battle of the Explorer. But that, yeah, yeah. But I most importantly, Junakiyama. Eddie's looking for you. Thanks, All man. right. <laughs> You're the best. Thank you. Hey, thanks for being here. Hey, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> hey, we got to make stuff happen. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Put it out. Only yeah. one guy could do that. That was great. <laughs> that is great. Thanks, John. That was awesome. Let's hear it for the champ. Thank you, John. <laughs> hey. hey. Oh, my good friend. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, you want to sit over here? Uh, just want to say welcome, and if we can get your thoughts on wrestling in the four-way, I believe that's the first time you've wrestled in a four-way for the IWGP Heavyweight Title, and so your feelings on that and the crowd tonight. えっと、ま、本日フォーエーマッチだったんだけど、ま、それちょっと試合を振り返ってみてで、あと初のタイトルマッチとしてフォーエーではないですか。それはいかがでしたか。まずまず最初にま、あの、ま、こういう舞台を
、まあ、今日 AW の選手と戦って、まあ、こんだけの傷がつくぐらいの強い選手でしたしまだ戦ってない選手もいるのでやっぱりそういう選手ともまた戦いたいと思いますしでも僕やっぱ子どもの頃にドアを開けたらやっぱ閉めなさいっていう母親に言われているのでそれをやっぱしっかりと母親の言いつけを守ろうかなと思ってますね。Okay, so yeah, obviously you can see the physical evidence on Okada's face of how tough late some of the AEW wrestlers are. And there's plenty of other AEW wrestlers that Okada would like to compete against.、Um, but his mum would always say, Once, if you leave a door open, do you live in a barn? You have to shut it. And、uh, Okada has to be the one to do that at some point. Um, first off, great match tonight. Thank you.、Uh, with there being a language barrier in the ring, with some of the people in the ring speaking English and you speaking Japanese, how does that affect the match? So, this is a language barrier to you, come on. Referee, not a way, go that the sheet. So, you are just a yari ni kritis, car, no car, ni honjin toste. But the more. プロレスはもう言語もない戦いだと思うので、もう言語は関係ないですし、まあリング上で戦うだけなので、まあ英語は何も問題ないのかなと思います。まあ僕も、えー、Make It Rain っていうのは知ってるんで、まあその三つさえ分かれば問題ないのかなと思います。Yeah, professional wrestling is really a universal language, and once you get there, it's all about the physicality and what happens in the ring.、Um, so really, there isn't any particular need. Uh, to speak any specific language, as long as Okada knows how to say make it rain, then that's all that matters. Steven Milhausen here from DAZONA and Casa Chica. Great match tonight. Thank you. And, you know, you talked about wanting to face other AEW wrestlers. What other AEW wrestlers really pique your interest? I want to fight an AEW wrestler. Tony Khan? まあ僕が出すよりもやっぱりこうファンの皆さんにいろいろ想像してもらった方がやっぱこのプロレスっていうのは楽しくなると思うんで、まあ、あえて僕は口に出さずに皆さんがまあなんとなく岡田はこの人と戦いにたいんじゃないかなと思ってほしいですねそっちの方がなんか楽しいと思います。Uh, yeah, so I mean, apart from maybe Tony versus Okada, that's a dream match that's sure to happen.、Um, the, the joy of professional wrestling is this two way communication with the audience, and、uh, you know, that's for the fans to decide and start to clamor for and, and start to whip up encouragement for and speculate. And、uh, that's what the fun is for all of you guys and for us as well. So,、uh, you know, that's, that's where the joy is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank 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 Thanks, Chris. Do we have audio for questions? Would you like to express some thoughts? And then we'll have time for one question for Fabio. So, what's going on? This guy. Fabio, the floor is yours. We'll take a question from right over here. All right. See, table is mine. It's yours. Uh, Claudio, pleasure to see you back in the ring. A lot、Thank、of fans、you. excited for it. Kevin Kelma, sportskita.com. Um, what was the motivating factor for you to make this leap to all elite wrestling?、Uh, how, how long do I have to answer that? As long as you want.、Um, <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes the, star align, the stars align for a perfect moment, and、um, that's what happened tonight. I mean, like, I'm, I hope Brian is right. I know Brian will be back, but、um, it's just perfect fit. I just talked to、uh, Mox. You know, we've been going back for 10, 10 12 years. I've known him for a long time.、Uh, we used to ride together, we used to work out together, we still do, we talk. Like, it's just, it just fits, you know? And at the end of the day, you know, I'm always looking for new challenges. 
And I mean, here in AW, it's like, I mean, it's like, I'm like a kid in the candy store. Yeah, of course. Oh, awesome. Uh, welcome to AEW, Claudio. Uh, Thank you. Now that you're here, not looking backwards, looking forwards, uh, like you said, you're a kid in a candy shop right yeah. now. There yeah. are um, a lot of people in AEW that the fans would like to see you mix it up with. Now, you don't have to give us one name, but is there a short list of people that you in particular are excited to get to share the ring with? I mean, I was so excited to share the ring tonight with uh, Zack Sabre Jr. You know, I mean, I wrestled him the last time in 2009. Um, there's so many guys that I just known for years. It, like, I just, you know, like Orange Cassidy, for example, is one of them, you know. Um, we're not talking about the, the one that yells and screams all the time like a little kid because, <laughs> uh, you know, it's just, to me, what is most important is that the fans are excited, right? Who do you want to see me wrestle next? That to me was always the important thing is like, who is my dream opponent? Like, I don't care. Who do you guys want to see me wrestle, right? And, and here in AEW, all that stuff can happen. You know, there's even people are hurt. Like I know, I, 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 last time I wrestled Kenny Omega, I was in Ring of Honor, probably 2008. I think we've grown a lot since then, so, you know, that's just worth a mention, you know what I mean? But then, like, it, it, I just, I can just name literally everybody I just run into in the locker rooms and, you know, backstage, and it's just like, it's, like, again, I can probably give you a short list of who I don't want to step in the ring with, and that is nobody. <laughs> so, like, you know what I mean? So, to me, it's, it's, like I said, I'm a kid in a candy store, and, um, you know when you go shopping and they tell you, no, pick whatever, and you're just there and you're like, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know what to pick? That's me. It's, it's, I just come in here and I don't know if you can tell, I'm very happy. And uh, it just, it, it fits. This is my first night, and I told this to a bunch of people, this is my first night here. I feel like I've been here for years. It's just like, it, it just fits. It's awesome. Yeah, please. I would point out everybody that we are, I think, about uh, 69 hours from Blood and Guts, roughly. Uh, we are approaching your, you have a, thank you. Yeah, you have a quick turnaround, and, uh, you know, there's uh, not a lot of time, so if anybody does uh, have a question pertaining to Wednesday night, also, uh, you have a pretty big match coming up uh, your, for your Dynamite debut, which I'm very excited about. So here's the other thing, right? You always look for a challenge. I mean, Zack Sabre Jr., on Sunday, and then Blood and Guts on Wednesday. That's a challenge. That's awesome. And to me, the Blood and Guts, that's like a staple, right? And like to be thrown right in there with, uh, you know, my friends, you know, with that uh, Mox, Yuda. It's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. And to me, that's what gets you up in the morning, right? That's what makes you work out every day. That's what makes, that's what makes me tick. So I can't wait. It's, 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 it's awesome, and um, what I love is that that show is on free TV. Yeah. I can't, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, wait, you get on free TV? It's awesome. So it's like, to me, that's, again, kid in the candy store. It's great. We're excited to have you on Wednesday night on TBS, and uh, you've saved one of our biggest events we've ever had tonight, and now you're going to save us again <laughs> on Wednesday, and I think we're all excited to see you on uh, Well, it if, you, if you have a problem... Uh, if you don't know who else to call. What is the A-team slogan, right? You, you <laughs> call the Swissman, so. <laughs> That's very good. Yeah, is there anything else, uh, Jim? Is, we, oh, okay, well, we they really appreciate you coming in and uh, not just uh, doing the press conference, but also being here tonight. It means a lot. Thank no, you. thanks. Uh, glad to be here, and I'm super excited for uh, Wednesday, Blood and Guts, and then I'm super excited for the Wednesday after that, and then the Wednesday after that, and the Wednesday after that, and hell yeah. <laughs> Claudio is all elite. That's true. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Claudio. Thanks a lot. Are we getting a hot tag? The hot tag. Congratulations, Chip. Thank you so much. Let's go. I guess this is for this, right? That is what that's for. 
I Thank you. <laughs> See, it's not that uh, it's very, unlike other champions who've had trouble working that. It's not that hard. Thunder, JD from Off The Script. Nice to see you. Tony, thank you. Um, two incredible matches back to back. One with Deeb, one with Tony Storm tonight. I know everybody's saying, with all the rumors circulating, who's coming here, when they're coming here. I'm not here for that. I know the, I know the division you want to build. So after these two great matches, where do you want to take this division and this title? Um, well, as I've said it before, I would love to be a traveling champion. And as you guys know, it was announced that I will be going to Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling pretty soon in, in July. So I don't know what the future is going to hold for me in this aspect. But if there's an opportunity to defend the championship or have anybody come from somewhere else, I think uh, Tony will, will make it happen. And I know, I, I know what you're saying because last week also Taya Valkyrie called me out for AAA for the championship at Reina de Reina. So... I will take anybody, anytime, anywhere. Plain and simple. Hi, Thunder. Rich Van Pro Wrestling Torch. Uh, we saw it in the match, but I wanted you to talk a little bit about the influence of Dustin Rhodes and yes. how he's kind of helped you as you've gone along. Your career um, he, he's been with me from day one, the first day that I came here as a, a non-signed um, talent. He came in and he's like, he saw something in me. He's like, you just got it, girl. Like, you're going to make a huge change in this division. And he just took me under his wing, and uh, we became really close. Like, I, I just talked to him, like, 20 minutes ago, and I was like, just remember, I'm your, you know, wrestling daughter, so you're screwed. So <laughs> he's been very kind to, like, allow me to use some of his moves now. And as you guys saw today, I did uh, his finisher. So I was, like, very, very um, humble that he allowed me to do this now. And um, I owe him a lot because he – every – Every night before I wrestle, he always reminds me that I am the best and that I should believe in myself all the time. And, um, and he believes in me, too. So that's, that says a lot from somebody like him. Um, first off, great match tonight. Thank you. Um, with all the different gear designs and makeup that you've done to the ring, how do you decide what to do on which day? Oh, man, that's a really good question. <laughs> so I've been working on this gear for probably about a year. I always tell Tony, I'm like, gonna, I'm going to top the next year on the next pay-per-view, and I'm going to top the next one. So it's always, it has to do with culture. Sometimes it has to do with cosplay. Uh, I'm just very creative all the time, and uh, I like to create uh, new stuff. But this one is specific. I really wanted to go for the Aztec Warrior, because, like, you guys know I have a, a tattoo on the side of my leg, and that's an Aztec Warrior with, like, MMA gloves, because it's just, like, everything at the same time. So, um, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm already working on the next one. I still don't know what it's going to be. But I like to keep it very interesting. And also, because I would like to have all the toys, right? So, <laughs> um, um, I would like to have um, different special action figures for each cool design so you know it's, it's a, a nice way to make some extra money here there are only there. a couple times i remember coming to you and saying like i felt real strong and two in particular were the original saint patrick's day slam yes that i felt really strong that if you went out and wore green we could do something really iconic and from the beginning we set out to do something really special there and you did and then we went back this year in the saint patrick's day slam and had the rematch in the cage with Britt for the championship and again, I felt really strong. You had to wear green again. Yes. And, uh, and uh, I think uh, you do a great job in the designs, but on the St. Patrick's Day Slams, I think they've also been two of your very iconic uh, appearances. So that's, uh, I just think uh, you do a great with it, but also some of them have been associated with big events too. Thunder Rosa, there's another champion in AEW, very outspoken Jade Cargill, the TBS women's champion. She's been saying a lot of things in all different directions in AEW. Some yeah. say that she doesn't have the place to say those things. You have a championship. How do you feel about that? Well, I let her do her thing. You know, she likes to run her mouth. I let her run her mouth. You know, we were uh, raised and brought up in different styles and in different places. Uh, she was blessed that uh, she was right there at the right place at the right time, kind of like me, but, you know, with less time because I had to, like, do a lot of stuff in the Indies. So if she feels inclined to say what she needs to say, that's fine. Everybody has their own opinion. You know, I respect her. Again, I've said it multiple times. Every time she, um, she has stepped in the ring, she has brought something new. She's always working, and, you know, if she feels very inclined to go after people, she's going to do whatever she wants, right? 
Um, as long as she doesn't get personal with me, I don't have a, pr a problem with her. But as soon as she starts getting personal, then we have a, we have a problem. Oh, thunder. Okay, so first of all, I want to know, you know, we've waited for such a long time to, for you to actually become champion, and you finally got this moment, and it was so awesome, so grand. And so I want to ask you, now that you've been champion for quite some time, what would you say is that thing that you have learned about yourself now that you're champion and that you've held the belt? Wow, it's actually, I saw it on Twitter, it's 100 days, so <laughs> it just went by fast. Like, I just remember St. Patrick's Day, you know, it was a very special moment. I think it is, it's an uphill battle with yourself. As a champion, you're not only representing the division, but you're also representing the company, right? So it's been, um, it's been quite a journey. And I think, uh, I wanna thank Tony and Mega for uh, literally, like, literally holding my hand at some points because it's been rough um, and they always have a lot of support. And when I have boys need a need of something, they've always been there for me. And when you have support like that, it really means a lot because, um, you know, moving the curtain a little bit, we all suffer from, you know, different things, family issues, or just like we face a lot of struggles that people don't know. But when you have people like that that care for you, um, not only they help you to become a better champion, but they also uh, help you become a better person. And honestly, I can tell you in the last, in the last month, they've been such a support for me. And I am very thankful to the AEW family because they have allowed me to be me and they have allowed me to accept myself for who I am and present that to the world. Because Tony has never said anything, no, you can't do that, Melissa, or hey, uh, Thunder, you can't. He's always allowed me to be myself. And I think for a lot of people that have been in the business, it, they can't say that, you know? So uh, I'm really thankful, Tony. And, Thank you. And, and you know that. You have changed the life not only in my family, but the life of a lot of women that are, you know, working with me. And because of what I'm doing right now, I'm allowed to help them, you know, get where they want to be. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you, champ. Thank you, guys. That was great. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tony. You're great. You're great, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jim. So we're going to have uh, FTR here join Tony for the last match of the night. About 10 or 15 minutes before this, Tony will wrap it up for those 10 or 15 minutes. Great. Right. Uh, try to close around that 12 Uh-oh. They're carrying in a lot of weight. Hey, John, you're going to need, we're going to need multiple guys. Much more mature than that Jay White. Well, I'll tell you what. I, if you want to put the IWGP boys up here, maybe I can carry all of these. <laughs> I'll set these here for you. I'll hand these off to you boys. And you can put the IWGP. Can we give these guys a hand? Put the IWGP bunch of you. A lot of hands. Yeah, give them a hand. That kind of hand, too. There you go. <sighs> Look at these. It's not easy having all this gold, guys. Let's <laughs> go. So let's fucking go. <laughs> oh, thank you. So, you got all these, huh? Yeah. You got all your stuff. Hero Wrestle. Congratulations, first of all. So you're holding the IWGP belts. Are you going to defend them, and are you willing to defend them overseas? No. No, we're not going to defend them. We're going to lose our smile. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and never. Um, yeah, the whole the whole dream for us was to come to do AEW, to do New Japan, to be AEW champions, to be IWGP heavyweight tag team champions. And the pandemic kind of, you know, slowed that down for a while. And now things are opening back up. We're getting back out here. Travel's becoming way more easy and accessible for everybody. And yeah, we'll go kick some ass in New Japan. I think ultimately, you know, uh, the reason we came here is because um, we fucking love wrestling. I mean, uh, I've said it a million times before, but uh, what I perceive to be God and, and my wife and daughter and then professional wrestling. And that's all I've got in my life. Um, and so for me to be able to write down beside my best friend, to, for me to be able to write our names beside the greatest tag teams of all time in American history, uh, like the uh, like the Arns and Tullys and the Midnight Expresses and the Hart Foundation and the Bulldogs. Um, now we get to go to Japan and write our names beside the guys like 
Bigelow and Vader and Hase and Muda and the Steiner brothers and you know and and, and to be able to do that uh, around the globe um, that's pretty cool and that's that's what we want to do uh, in life and in wrestling too. Hey guys, Rich Fan Pro Wrestling Torch. Uh, my question is, you, you both have spoken publicly about the struggles it took to get to this point, and you seem to be missing one set of tag titles. So first, how does it feel to be where you are now in your journey? And second, when are you gonna start to make that approach for the AEW World Tag Title? Uh, <clears throat> so as we walk up here, you see um, we're not the, uh, prototypical professional wrestlers. Um, we're barely scratching the surface of five foot ten, you know. Uh, we don't have the greatest bodies in the world. Um, I have a completely authentic Southern accent. And so we're fighting every single um, obstacle in, you know, uh, in, 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 uh, in the realm of, of uh, what we perceive to be mainstream professional wrestling. And so uh, for us to be able to overcome every sing single obstacle and, uh, be able to, to be in this position where we're at right now in AEW to hold these three championships and, you know, to possibly be able to fight for the AEW World Tag Team Championships, uh, there's nothing better than that. Um, so we're, we're, we're proud, you know, very proud of where we've come from. And, and I think sometimes fans, um, some of the fans, not all of them, not, not, not even most of them, but some of the fans can say, oh, you, sh you, should, you should just sit back and, and, and collect your checks and I'll stop complaining. But if I stop complaining, man, I can't go home to my eight-year-old daughter and say, you can be whatever you want. I can't go home to my eight-year-old daughter and say, you can be the, 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 the first woman president. You know what I mean? Because if I sit back and just collect a check, then I'm lying to her because I'm working hard for her so she knows that when daddy leaves every single week, he's going to work so he can take care of mama and her. You know what I mean? And I'm and and I've overcome those obstacles to show her that if I can make it here with well, them fucking hell, man, she can do whatever she wants because she's way smarter than me. She's way nicer than me. She's way prettier than me. She's way so much of a better person than I am. And now I'm able to do this with my best friend and the fuck. Listen, I've worked and I've I've I'm not even kidding. This is a complete shoot. I have um, I have. <laughs> I uh, worked on a septic tank truck where I have human shit every single day. I have worked at Taco Bell where I have put uh, almost human shit on tortillas <laughs> and served them every single day. Um, <clears throat> I've done every single job possible because I grew up poor. And, and I've worked for every single person in the world. And I'm not even saying this because sometimes I, we have our differences. I've never worked for a better human being who cares about me and my family as people than this man. And so now I get to do that here and on top of that, take care of my wife and on top of that, get to take care of my daughter and on top of that, get to say, Hey, you are a woman and you can do whatever the hell you want to do because daddy's doing it and you're way better than I am. Fuck man. That that's, that's, that's the ultimate for me. You know? Yeah. We've, we've both been doing this over half of our lives at this point. And for the past eight years, I didn't know where it was going to go, but we've said to anybody that would listen that we were going to be the best tag team that's ever done this. And for a long time, people laughed at us and thought that we were just these overconfident, undersized, non bodybuilders that had this inflated ego. And it wasn't, we just wanted to manifest something. We wanted people to believe what we believed. And if I didn't believe the shit that we said, then I never would have made it here. And I, I don't just say that wrestling gave us the life that we have. It saved my life. And I, I'll say that every single day, like I came from absolute shit. Like, um, if it wasn't for this, I don't know where I would be, but I know it wouldn't be good. And so to have these, to have this, to have this, to be the longest reigning number one contenders in AEW Tag Team Championship history, that means a lot to me. Dude, not in front of him, <laughs> don't say that. I said it means a lot to me. Um, but yeah, we've already been AEW Tag Team Champions once and I, we just got a little small taste of that, and I don't like not having what I, I perceive to be an FTR run. And when we come out here and we win the AEW Tag Team titles, and we will win them, and we go on a, like a two-year run and then we lose our smiles and retire, then we'll say, yeah, we've done it. We're the best to ever do it. Just kidding, Brett. I'm not. Chris Walker from The Zone News. In recent weeks, we've seen outstanding singles matches from the both of you, really good matches. Is that a 
brief look into both your guys' futures away from all your tag team achievements? It's something you both like to do. I, mean, I won't speak for Dax, but for me, I think we're just really good wrestlers in general, singles or tag. And it's, uh, you know, we're unbiased, great professional wrestlers. Um, Dax has always been one of these guys that has eat, slept, and breathed professional wrestling to a point that it can be unhealthy at times. But like you said, we work for a guy who lets us be human, lets us be assholes, lets us have our bad days. But at the end of those days, we get to come out here and whether it's singles, whether it's tag, we get to put on the best version of what we do. And I think that just elevates us completely in everybody's eyes. And it, I don't want to be a tag team guy or a singles guy. I always want to be a tag team guy. But if we do singles matches, we're going to kill it. If we do tag team matches, we're going to kill it. If you do anything, we're going to kill it. So as a, as a kid, uh, I, mean, I mean, a little kid, I mean, June 13th, uh, June 13th, maybe it was 23rd, 1993 is when I decided I wanted to be a professional wrestler. Uh, and I remember, <coughs> I remember praying every single night that I would, that God would either allow me to be uh, a WCW, an ECW, or the other place, heavyweight champion. Uh, I remember walking to my friend's house and there were these long stretch of bushes and I would fake like I was tagging their hands. <laughs> And I, was, and I was hoping, I was like, I hope all these leaves become my fans, okay? <laughs> That's what I wanted. That's all I've ever wanted was to be the best possible professional wrestler in the world. I, right now, I want to be the best in the world. And when I retire, I want people to say he's the best, he was the best ever. But if they don't, that's okay. Because at least I tried. At least that's what I strived for. And that's what I tried to make happen. Uh, as far as the singles matches, I'm just very fortunate that Tony has trusted me, trusted both of us into to having that and to, into being able to, to deliver those matches. Um, but uh, we're on the back end of our career, you know? Um, and we've built a legacy and we're continuing to build a legacy in tag team wrestling. So why would I start over now as a singles wrestler and build from that? If the opportunity comes up, and he gets injured or something, then yeah, yeah, I gotta feed my family, so so I'll do it. But uh, ultimately, uh, I just want to do good for professional wrestling, and I think doing good for professional wrestling right now is to continue to write our legacy. Dave, how do you remember that date, June thirteenth, June twenty third? What's that date? It's uh, King, King of the Ring, nineteen ninety three. King of the Ring, oh, nineteen ninety three. Yeah. Okay, that's great. There was yeah. a guy that the had Nutter like Center. three the matches Center. that night, and won yep. the inaugural King of the Ring. I can't remember his name right now. <laughs> that's great. That's what it is. That's great. <laughs> Will Washington, uh, Fightful. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, it's great that you knew that. <laughs> um, so the last couple of weeks, uh, this past Wednesday and tonight, you guys have received some of what I'd call the biggest pops you guys have ever had. And uh, a big factor in that is, of course, you guys being one of the best tag teams out there. But uh, Dude, uh, start. For, rewind. Uh, Don't the, say one of. Come on. It's, At I least know. lie to us. We're right here in front <laughs> okay. of you. The best. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Jeez. But another factor press, in lie. that has been um, the change in theme music, which I think last fall a lot of people were a little bit skeptical of. But I would say today, across the board, people have called one of the best themes out there. I've been crowds where I've seen people going nuts over it, <laughs> dancing in the stands. How do you guys feel like the music has affected uh, your guys' presentation, and uh, <laughs> you guys the, love the, it. Yeah, the only person we got to thank for that is Tony. I mean, yeah. that was his call, and he called us in his office, and he was so excited, man. <laughs> he was like, you guys have to listen to this, and we listened to it, and I, I can't lie to you. At first, I was like, oh, my God, that's not, the, that's not what we're used to. You know, we're used to being these badass guys who, like, come out and fight and stuff, but uh, that, God dang. It sounds like I'm, gonna, I'm kissing his butt, and I oh. promise I'm not. This is the most that you've ever done it. <laughs> <laughs> to your face, at least. Your face. But th that's the, that's the thing is, like, what they don't understand, what no one understands is, god dang, like, the, the word genius gets thrown around, but he really is freaking smart when it comes to wrestling. Thanks, I mean, in, in life in general, he's smart. But, like, Thanks. When, when, <laughs> but when, yeah, no, when, the first part means more coming from you. That well, means a lot you. coming from you, but he, but especially he, considering who I pulled the music from. He probably wouldn't be the first. To <laughs> <say>. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, well, no, no. He, I, but I, I grew up on I, him. I, this is gimmick. Uh, but he, he really is, man. Like, he, like the, I can think of tackle, drop down, leapfrog, and, and lock up, and stuff like that. But he can think broader than that. 
And and sometimes it makes me mad, you know, because I'm like, oh my god, I'm supposed to be the smart, the 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 the, You're the professional. Smart as hell. Well, thank you. I'm supposed to be the professional, but then he takes it to another level. And so he played this music for us, and he was so hyped, and it was cool music. And I was like, I don't know if that's us. Uh, I'll be damned if it's not us. And that, yeah, you're right. That that has helped our prep. I think that. I think. Um, I think like uh, uh, our uh, rainbow attire and like what we want to present out there. Um, I think his mullet and my mustache. Uh, and then I also think uh, I think the style of wrestling we bring to. I think it all just came together at once, and the universe provided it for 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 us and. And I think uh, it's manifested itself into making us some pretty good baby faces. I think 99% of it's just the two of you guys and less than 1% of it is that. And another piece of it that is, you know, 99% of it is down to the two of you, but one person, he's not here tonight, but I've seen you become a more confident and better wrestler since CM Punk walked through that door. Oh, yeah. I've seen you both take it to another <laughs> level as his partner and backstage and talking mm -hmm. to him. And I've watched you get more switched on and I've watched you take it from being one of the best wrestlers in the world to true, like on the, the, from the highest platform to somehow an even higher platform. And the two of you guys have taken it to another level. And particularly, I've watched you get mentally switched on in a totally different way. And Dan, you've always been there. And as a, as a team, you've always been there. But now as a third, you have a third guy with you. And it's something really strong. It would have been a very different build to this pay-per-view. We still had one of the greatest things I've ever been a part of in my life. But I think, like I said, 99% of it's down to you guys, and then there's all these other factors, music, and I think Phil has been yeah, a very sure. positive influence on both of you. The, yeah. I think just to kind of sum it all up is that there was nothing like, there wasn't a roadmap to how we were going to get here. We all just, Dave and I, Dax and I, David and I decided we wanted to just make as much fun as we could with the rest of what we we're going to be doing because we don't know how long we're going to be doing this. And that kind of started the, the snowball. And then just small things here and there punk's arrival tony having this idea to switch the music and like when i heard the music i loved it but i i, I go straight to my mind and i'm like how do i walk out to this and i'm trying to picture it and i'm like it's great music but i don't know how to how to be this but you don't have to now like it's just kind of one of those things where you hit it and like everybody's kind of moves however they feel individually and like it's just been one of those things where everything just kind of fallen into place and it's been so serendipitous that it's almost comical, but it has like, it's, it's peaked to right here. Like this has kind of all just been one <laughs> wild and crazy coincidence. Dean drove me over here today. And while Dean and I were sitting in the car, I was sitting in shotgun and I played it on my phone in the car with him. <laughs> and I showed him a tweak I made, like, cause if you, the, the track, I think that's on iTunes, there's like a cut about 45 seconds in. Cause there's like, Mikey had it go up. He put like a little interlude between the core, kind of what I'd call the hook. And like, it kind of goes up and then it goes back down. And I was like on TV, we got to just, we don't have, I don't have four seconds, Mikey. You got to go <laughs> right back to it. And uh, so the TV version, I think there's like a four, but I love it so much. And it was just one of those things. One it was just a light bulb and I was like this is what we need this is what we need uh yep. the, the frogs this is what the frogs, frogs. just real, <laughs> real quick frogs. when he called us into his office like I said I'd already heard it once because he hadn't made it there yet and I loved it but I'm, I'm trying to like again all about visualization for me like I'm a very visual guy and so I have to like picture it and I'm trying to picture it and like he's playing it now and Dave's in there and Tony's just jamming the fuck out dude and it's like okay like everybody's gonna be doing this so like just let's everybody just feel like tony feels right now let's go and look at it it's just yeah. been and then if the I, just just possible. one more minute and then we'll i know you guys are good on time we have time i'm gonna these guys want to hear five me. hours We're <laughs> but but oh, i want to go off something tony said about punk being here and helping us out and, and, and helping us uh so I've, I've been very open about my mental struggles and uh and my 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 anxiety um, man, I went through a really, really, really tough time with anxiety just last year, almost to the day right now, last year. Yep. And it almost completely broke me. And then on top of that, when right? When you went back on the road, you were having a tough time. Tough time. Like, I, I've never, ever, ever been that vulnerable and that scared in my entire life. Um, and as a 37-year-old Southern male, you don't, that doesn't happen. And it did happen. Uh, and then you on don't top talk of that, about it when it yeah, happens. And on top of that, my almost watched my best friend bleed out, you know, from his, his injury. And so those two things combined, um, we were, we, we just knew, like you said, we had to have fun. But uh, with the, with punk being here, 
Um, I don't care what anyone says, and I don't care if you, if you say he's a WWE guy or, or we're, 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 we're uh, deviating away from AEW because he's there. He is here to make AEW better, and he's here to make us better. Uh, he has helped me through my anxiety, man, and uh, that shows you the human being he is because he'll take time for me uh, to say, hey, dude, come with me, let's have some coffee or let's watch some wrestling, and he'll talk me through this stuff. And I've come out on, thank God, I've come out on the other side of anxiety, and I owe a lot of it, and I owe a lot of it to both these guys. This man gave me time off if I needed it, and this man talked to me every single day and almost fought people for me. Uh, but also on top some. of that, <laughs> Punk uh, is a great human being and a great addition to our roster, so we're lucky to have him. Sorry. Hey guys, JD from the Off the Script podcast. Uh, I want to ask you guys about the Owen Hart match that you guys had, the Owen Hart Foundation match. The preparation, what was the preparation for that match? How many Brett and Owen matches did you guys actually watch? And how did you decide on what you wanted to do as far as the sequences in that match? And Dax, this question's for you. A lot of online chatter about you possibly being wrestler of the year the way you've worked this year. How do you oh feel God. about He that? is wrestler of the year. <laughs> I mean, he is. Uh, so I, I understand what you're getting to as far as the Brett and Owen matches. Um, and I saw a couple of people tweet about it and say, oh, man, they did, the, they did, they did a rehash. No, I, I have done a rehash for the last 18 years of my career of Bret Hart. You know what I'm saying? And, and on, so it's not, it, it wasn't that we tried to, because I, I saw the tweet and it was like. Uh, seven different matches. With it different was literally clips. six or seven matches of Bret Hart. And, and they were like, oh, watch this and this. I took a front turnbuckle. And they were like, oh, that was just like the Owen and Brett match. Brett no. took a German suplex before. Oh, yeah, he cats. took a German suplex. No, no, it wasn't. I just love wrestling, man. God damn. I, I love, sorry for saying GD in front of you. <laughs> I love wrestling. I love it. And I watch it every single day. There's not a day that goes by I don't watch wrestling. So, yeah, if I accidentally subconsciously steal something from the match, damn, my bad. I apologize for being a wrestling fan above everything else. <laughs> That's my fault, okay? Not, not anybody else's fault. But uh, I didn't. The one thing we stole, I guess, from the Brett Owen match was the victory roll because people thought that was going to be the finish, and we wanted to trick you guys, and that's it. Other than that, we just wanted to work. We didn't call anything. We, let, we went out there, and we freaking worked, and we reacted off of each other, and that's what the beauty of professional wrestling is, is emotion and reaction and, 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 and physicality and, and storytelling, and that's what we did. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't sit down and watch one match and say, okay, we got to do this, we got to do this while I'm you know, doing my little deal at home. I'm sorry, but so I'm doing my little deal at home. No, I just love wrestling, and I know what makes people feel. And that's all we wanted to do was make them feel. Uh, as far as being wrestler of the year, that's pretty freaking cool. Uh, uh, I would, it, would be, uh, it would be really, really crazy if somehow at the end of 2022 uh, I became wrestler of the year. Uh, we became tag team of the year, and we had match of the year with either the Briscoes or the Bucks. That would be pretty. Or cool. whoever's coming up in the next six months or so. Yeah, that would be pretty freaking cool. But sorry to take no, all that. Any, anybody in wrestling no. worth their salt in the business that has studied it and wanted to be this for a long time and didn't just come from anywhere else to get paid, like they're influenced by somebody. And when yes, we're influenced by the Hearts. We're influenced by Eddie. We're influenced by the Midnights. We're influenced by Arn and Tolly. We take bits from everybody. Everybody in wrestling today that's successful at a certain level is probably borrowed from somebody or been influenced by somebody and you see that reflected in their work like one or two things yes purposely taken from wrestlemania 10 everything else just happenstance because these guys have helped shape our careers and our lives and everything that we've done has been around professional <laughs> wrestling and professional wrestlers and those guys are professional wrestlers like everybody else, like I can, I can take anything from a sports entertainer. I can take any, anything from a, an actor or this or that. But when it comes to the actual in-ring aspect of it, I'm going to model myself after the absolute best people that's ever done this because I want to be up there in that echelon. So like, for our match, there wasn't any different preparation. There wasn't any different stu tape studying. It was just, okay, what's the story we want to tell? How do we do this and pay our ultimate respect to Owen? And how do we just go out there and have this match without – compromising what FTR is. And I think that's, that was the only goal we had. And, and one more minute, and then I'll let you guys go. Um, uh, Keep it rolling. We also wanted this match. We wanted this match. When people thought of the Owen Hart tournament, we wanted them to think, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Dax and Cash. Dax, that's what we wanted. Um, 
also, uh, you know, to, to, to go on the point of the studying the tapes and stuff, you got to understand uh, a lot of guys who were incredible wrestlers made a lot of money from the end of the 90s up until right now. So there's a, there's a gap where we missed out, not just us, but like the, our generation of wrestlers missed out on the legends of wrestling. Think about this, Ole Anderson wrestled for 20 years, 20, 25 years, 30 years, and, and Eddie Graham, the same thing, but then he went to booking because they needed to make money for years. So they got to work with all these different, uh, different generations of guys. We, our generation didn't get that. So we didn't get that, we, I mean, rest in peace, not, not anything, but, but like the Eddie Guerrero's, we didn't get to work with him. And Steve Austin's and, and, we, and Rocks and stuff, we didn't get to work with them because they made so much money so they were able to get out. The only way that we can learn now is by studying because we can't work with them. I can't work with them and lock up with Steve Austin and say, okay, slow down, kid. I can't. So I have to watch and study him and say, okay, why does he slow down? Why do they do this? Why does Bret Hart take a headlock, take over here, and they sit here for a second? Or why does Bret Hart sell? Why does, you know what I'm saying? So that's how we have to learn. Our generation has to learn. So if we accidentally take something from a match you see, our bad. But that, mm -hmm. that, that's why we, that, that's how we learn now. Thank you, guys. That was awesome. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Always. Anybody would help carry all this? <laughs> we can get you a hand. We can get you a hand. I got it. Far more mature than the other IWGP heavyweight champion was. Hey, thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thank you, guys. Okay. I'm going to try and... So I can do a full 15, 20 minutes, Jim. This is highly unusual. We've never done it. I feel like Larry Sanders on his eighth anniversary special. I've never done this before. John gave me a non-alcoholic beer. Do you guys mind if I wait? We'll get run real restroom real quick and come right back and pick up. Thank you.
Thank you. That Larry Sanders eighth anniversary. That was for you, RJ City, wherever you are. RJ City watching in Toronto. Hey, you, you up? Oh, oh, hey, Cliff, you. Are you? Uh, okay. Hey, welcome back. Hey, thanks. All right, so now your chambers, Big Old Well Media. So you own AEW, you own RH. Wondering, you mentioned Forbidden Door 2 or maybe an All In 2. Where are you going with either one of those, possibly? Did I mention an All In 2? I just, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> well, uh, now with the acquisition of the ROH library and the ROH promotion, that is video footage that is now uh, a trademark of ours, so it's definitely something that, that I am open to in the future. Uh, the biggest event in AEW history is All Out. I think uh, it, there's, there's, uh, yeah, uh, I will get into that. I, we can get into that. Raph, I don't know if you want to, I mean, we've said uh, September 4th. And we just got into Grand Slam, I think announcing Grand Slam at Arthur Ashe tonight. September 21st, Raph? Yep, and I just made the announcement to start the press conference about Ring of Honor, since you asked so nicely. Uh, July 23rd, we come back, Lowell, Massachusetts, yes. and uh, very excited about that. That'll be great uh, for Death Before Dishonor. Uh, very excited, and you just saw the, the champs here. We'll see, uh, they'll probably defend the titles between now and then, I'd imagine, and we'll, but we'll see where they're at coming into there, and a lot of other great champions in Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor pure champion, Wheeler Yuta, is actually defending the title on AEW Dark on Tuesday night leading into blood and guts is a bold move going into blood and guts so it's going to be wheeler yuda against tony nice who had a pure rules match last week that's going to be a great match i think on tuesday night really excited about wednesday night blood and guts i think for ring of honor uh a lot of great wrestlers in AEW with great backgrounds in ring of honor we've seen uh there's a lot of great opportunities but i'm really excited to bring that promotion back with death before dishonor and we'll see where that takes us uh, Hi, Tony. Nick Hausman, Wrestling Inc. How are you doing? Good, Nick. Yeah, thank you. I'm doing well. Thanks. It's great to Hey, it's hometown show for us. I know, right? It's wonderful. I'm going to be home in 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> uh, my question was about somebody the fans are still talking about that we haven't seen on AEW TV uh, since his uh, bombshell promo. Uh, that's MJF. Uh, is MJF still with AEW? Like, what is his status with the company right now? I am, uh, especially after the great show we did, I, I I'm not going to comment on it, but it's a, it's a fair question to ask, but I, I'm uh, pro not going to cover that one right now. Thanks, Nick. Um, do you have another question you want to ask since I was no, sure? No, I, you, I didn't want you to waste up your question. Let me, let me, let me, let me, do you have a, what's a follow up, Nick? Sure. It's okay. What is it? <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Nick. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. Uh, the other thing is I wanted to bring a little bit of the real world into this right now. Another non forbidden door question, but obviously on Friday, there was a big, Supreme Court ruling, a big topic of conversation is if employers are going to be paying for women on under their employee to be going across state lines to get if the situation does arise. Is that something that you would be willing to do for female members of the roster or people that are under your employee? Hasn't come up. Uh, I don't know. It's just that situation hasn't come up. And honestly, that uh, since last Friday, we've been working on Forbidden Door almost nonstop. So I, 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 that situation has never come up. Uh, so I, I can't say. But uh, sorry not to answer either of your questions, Nick. Um, it seems like you've got a ready-made feud between Moxley and CM Punk when he returns from injury. Was there any temptation to use CM Punk tonight um, to push that feud forward? Well, I think it m made a lot of sense with his just coming off surgery very recently for him at home recovering. I thought it would be good for uh, him to have a chance at home to uh, recover. I didn't think it would make sense for him to, to come out and get physically involved in anything coming just off surgery. So that's really my call. I think it doesn't make any sense for CM Punk to come in here injured on uh, just a couple weeks off a, an important surgery that is important for the whole company. And absolutely, we have something down the line now with a potential interim title match. Mox is going to defend the interim championship between now and then. So it does, it certainly as it stands right now, it would be CM Punk versus John Moxley for the undisputed AEW championship in a unification match. Chris, uh, Chris I know you know very well as a, somebody who covers for his own boxing and mixed martial arts and fighting, the idea of the interim championship and, and what it means. But obviously uh, when there's a champion who's had a surgery, 
it means potentially uh, some time off. I think it makes a lot of sense with us having the weekly television show to have a great interim champion defend the title between now and then. But So I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that it's going to be Punk versus Moxley, but I do think uh, we know that Moxley's the interim champion, the first ever interim AEW world champion, and it presents a very interesting matchup possibility down the line, but I also think there's a lot of really exciting matchups for Mox as the interim world champion on Dynamite and Rampage and potentially other places. So I'm really excited for John as the interim world champion, and uh, it feels like it was a long time ago because we've had a lot of people th come through that uh, not-so-forbidden door today to speak to you all. But uh, when John was up here, I, it, it was cool sitting up here with him, and uh, it means a lot to me and I think a lot of other people that he's back and to see him like this. It's awesome from where we were, from when I was in front of a lot of you before. Thank you. Thank you for coming over. Thanks, Chris. Hi, AJ. Hello. Uh, first off, great show tonight. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. And my question is going to be about Ring of Honor. And has there been any plans backstage to start up a weekly show for Ring of Honor? That is one of the most relevant and best questions. There's been a lot of conversations about it, but it takes two to tango, so as they say. So that uh, I would love to provide that and pre present that content. I think it's right now we've got this great new management team at Warner Brothers Discovery, and they are really, really strong management, and they're great. And I've had really good interactions and meetings with them, and I think there's a lot of projects at AEW they're very excited about, and I, and I, I have been talking to them about that, and also had conversations about now Ring of Honor TV with the new bosses of Warner Brothers Discovery, which is the largest creator of content in the world. and. It's really exciting to have that as our media partner. And in the pro wrestling space, with Ring of Honor now, I was really very eager to keep some of the momentum we built with Death Before, with Death Before Dishonor coming now, some of the momentum we built with Supercard of Honor because it was one of the most successful Ring of Honor pay-per-views ever, certainly the most successful in several years. And it would be probably on the top three Ring of Honor events in terms of generating revenue in 20 years, over 20 years now of Ring of Honor. And so I wanted to keep that momentum going. We really have something. So we, even though we aren't ready to launch the weekly TV show by July 23rd, by on July 23rd, we are gonna come back on pay-per-view with Death Before Dishonor. I'm really excited about the card. And we have great champions in Ring of Honor now. And there's, a, there's interesting things coming out of Supercard of Honor and things that have happened on AEW TV since Supercard of Honor. And whether it was Dynamite or Rampage and also Battle of the Belts where the Ring of Honor world title was defended. We've seen the world champion Jonathan Gresham. He defended it there against Dalton Castle and then he was on Rampage this week. The pure champion Wheeler Yuta was on the show tonight and will be in blood and guts. And also he's going to defend the title against Tony Nese between now and then. And we've got... Uh, of course, Mercedes Martinez, we've seen her t also teaming with Serena Deeb, which is kind of interesting lately, and a uh, number of other Ring of Honor stars. We saw Tully Blanchard bring his group in. Samoa Joe and Jay Lethal have a long-standing rivalry, which is pretty interesting because Samoa Joe is the Ring of Honor World Television Champion, and Jay Lethal is the longest reigning Ring of, Ring of Honor World Television Champion ever. And uh, that's a rivalry that goes back to our first Ring of Honor show. So there's a lot of cool things that have been happening in Ring of Honor and will happen in Ring of Honor. I am, I really am hopeful and optimistic that we are going to get weekly TV back, like you asked. But the next step is definitely July 23rd for Ring of Honor on Death Before Dishonor. Thanks, man. Hey, Hi, Tony. Nick Tilwalk, USA Today, Wrestling Junkie. Um, you mentioned earlier in the week that you've at least pondered the idea of a two-night show because of all the talent that you have on the roster. Um, and also, I think fans like to fantasy book a stadium show for you guys, like at a football stadium, a really large venue. Now that you've successfully pulled off Forbidden Door once, do you feel like this could be the event that would go in one of those directions, like a two-night show? Could it be bigger? I think it... Any, I mean, there's always possibilities for growth, and that's one of the really great things about our business has been the year-over-year pay-per-view growth. Every franchise we've ever had has grown year-over-year. Year. So, double or nothing, all Out, Revolution, and Full, Full Gear, all of them have had year-over-year year growth. And we've done four Double or Nothing now and three of All Out, Full Gear, and Revolution. All of them have gone year up year-over-year. Year. And so now with our kind of baseline we've set for this, I hope we can continue that trend also with our partnership with New Japan and have Forbidden Door go up year, year after year. And that would be great for us. 
people always ask me what my five-year plan is, and I'm really happy. I think if the, we can give the wrestling fans uh, dynamite and rampage and keep strong TV for the fans, and, and then obviously with Ring of Honor, I was just talking about that. I think there's opportunities there. For us, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's, it's a huge show now, but success would be growing it year over year. And in terms of the live attendance, this was a great live attendance. I mean, it's hard to beat this. Uh, but also growing the pay-per-view business year over year, expanding. We're in 130 countries, AEW now around the world. New Japan is in a lot of the same countries. We actually present our TV and streaming in New Japan through New Japan World. And I think just growing this business year over year would be big success, just like we've had with our other pay-per-view franchises. Thank you. Hi, Tony. Pat Laprad from Montreal TV Sports. Um, just wanted to see if you have any update on Adam Cole and, and what happened at the, of the, at the end of the match. Yeah, uh, I think uh, Adam Cole will be okay. And I think I, he, was, he was in the match and it was a very physical wrestling match. And uh, he, was, he was pinned in the match. And uh, the timing of it, it wasn't, uh, um, it, it, it may not have looked uh, when People expected it to happen, but that's when it happened, and he's 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 going to be okay long term. But uh, it was probably if if he couldn't continue wrestling, it made sense for that to, you know. Don't uh, I think if you can't keep fighting, there's uh, discretion is a better part of valor. So uh, that you know, I think long term he'll be okay. Thanks. Right here. All right, uh, Phil into the um, Bleacher Report. Um, Tony and Thunder Rosa had a great match tonight. Uh, I know coming into the match that. Tony had a lot of build around her time at Stardom. Uh, was there any interest in bringing anybody from Stardom or TJP for the show? Yes, I was interested in that. And there were, to be honest, the people from Stardom, I was interested in using Stardom. They have the obviously a close relationship with New Japan Pro Wrestling being aligned. And all the wrestlers from Stardom were pretty much booked and they didn't have visas. So it was a, it was a big obstacle. And, you know, I, I think there is definitely potential there. Certainly Tony is one of the hottest rising stars in AEW since she arrived in AEW and I thought it made great sense. She's been a champion in Japan. She's got great experience at stardom and also somebody who's been on our TV and it was a great match we could build to and it was a, it was not a blood rivalry where they hate each other but it was forged in mutual respect and it was fought fittingly enough. You just asked me about Ring of Honor fought with honor. And it was, a, it was a great wrestling match. And I think that was cool. And it made it different from some of the other blood feuds on the card where it was, you know, where you see Jericho and Eddie that want to rip each other's head off or where you had uh, Mox and Tana where it had been building for years and years where it was clearly going to be the two of them someday on a big stage. This was different, but it was a, a, a rivalry out of respect. And so I thought Tony was a perfect choice given who was on our TV, who was pushed, and also knowing that, you know, while it would, have, and it would have been another challenge in addition to many other challenges to take people from stardom and get them over on our TV, I think it was possible to do it, absolutely. Um, but the availability is the greatest ability of all in this business and most businesses, and in this case, there was no availability. So uh, Tony was, for many reasons, I thought a great choice, and I thought Tony and Thunder Rosa had a great match. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Hey, Rich. Hey, Tony, Rich Van Pure of Torch. Uh, quick question. On Friday, and then even, you started Friday with a press conference scrum, and you ended tonight with negative one, talking about the idea of trust, and what happens when people lose trust, gain trust, things like that. Uh, Sean mentioned the ESPN article. These guys tonight, the talent mentioned how much you trust them to do things either in the ring or outside. How do they build that with you? And then as you build your roster, how do folks still stay accessible to you and you not go crazy? Well, it's a great question. I think uh, for people who are really experienced in wrestling, Claudio, we'd never worked together before tonight, but I, with Claudio, I, based on his reputation and coming in, he's not somebody you necessarily need to put through uh, any kind of developmental. And we've used AEW Dark for people we don't know that well. JJ's in the back. JJ's been seen dozens and dozens of hours of AEW Dark live in Orlando. And there's other people here I know that have come uh, occasionally the tapings in Orlando, but before that, for over a year, we operated out of Daly's place. And that operated really as a true developmental system. And there's a lot of people, like including the acclaimed, who were singles wrestlers. Pat Buck trained them. And Pat Buck was working in WWE at the time, and he actually tried to get him to go up there. 
and I really wanted them to both stay and I and it kind of forced my hand when they were threatened to go and I was like I like them both I really need to do something to keep them I had the idea of the acclaimed for a long time I saw Max rapping on Twitter they were very capable on dark and then they got if you remember their first match was against Trent and Chuck and it was like a tryout match with a new gimmick the music was a little different it was loud it, it, it didn't quite but it, but it was enough I saw enough there I was like okay we're gonna do it. and then they went on probably like a 10 match winning streak after that I think winning matches on dark building up to build a record and build build Building experience, and that was there, and the and the entrance got better and better. Max had really only I'd seen I think I only seen him do the rapping on Twitter, I and on social media. I've never seen him do it as the entrance, so that was a new thing we put in. The idea of them as a team, even though they trained together, um, and so that's a great, really good example. Red Velvet, somebody who came in and was working on AW Dark, and has come in and become a really important part of our TV. Like very uh, story of my June. Uh, also somebody who got injured and has been a huge part of the TV recently and has been out with an injury, which is unfortunate uh, in that, that match she had with Chris, which was a great match on Rampage, Statlander and, and Red Velvet. We've had a lot of great matches and then unfortunately had injured people coming out of them, which is sometimes the price people pay with these great hard hitting matches. And, uh, but Red Velvet's another example like Max Caster and Anthony Bowens, both separately and then put together as a tag team maturing on that stage. Uh, powerhouse Hobbs, Will Hobbs, first he was Will Hobbs, and he, look how far he's come from when he started on AEW Dark, not as a person who was out there winning matches, and a person who grew as a wrestler and has grown as a person and a presence here in the company, number of other people. Uh, so there's, for, for people we don't know as well, sometimes going through Dark, negative one, little Brody, uh, through working on Dark, and he's done a lot of fun stuff. He's had fun matches down there. JJ's laughing in the back because he's seen some of the funniest stuff he's seen in his life with little Brody, and the kid's, he was 10 years old, and he's making, you know, hundreds of people, not tw not 15,000, but hundreds of people laugh in his studio. That's pretty good uh, for 10 years old, and so he earned my trust enough where I gave him a mic and put him out there uh, with, you know, some of his friends and some of his dad's close friends, like Mox, and Claudio and Eddie wasn't out there at that point, but Eddie would be another person on that list. And uh, it was just a nice thing for the crowd. And I wanted to get uh, him out there and I thought it was cool. And I thought, cause of, you know, Mox, I remember Mox's first pay-per-view defense of the title when he first won the title was against Brody Sr. So I just thought, it was, and that was probably the last time I've been as proud of a show that had as many challenges. I mean, that had the most challenges of any show ever. I could talk for an hour just about the three week build and putting that together during those tape shows and also learning how to edit shows because we never taped Dynamites before that. So uh, that probably April 2020 was a lot. And then into May 2020 is probably the last time I felt this way where it really came together and where they, it could have gone, it could have not gone this well. So uh, that, yeah, does that make sense? Thanks, man. Great. Tony, um, I want to talk about Orange Cassidy tonight. Um, match of the year, potentially, with uh, Will Ospreay. Uh, I'm a big Orange Cassidy guy. What was your reaction when that match was over? Match of the night to me. And reportedly, Orange Cassidy was supposed to get new theme music. I read somewhere today. Um, we didn't hear that tonight. It's a huge part of the wrestler's package. Is that something that you decide on specifically, or is it something that you work with? Yeah, the, I the decide on the music, but that is uh, this when I presented this song to him. So I'm I picked a lot of the music and work with Mikey on who's going to have what songs. I license music from outside sometimes, and generally I'm in charge of the music. Uh, with Mikey, who sees, oversees it and does an amazing job and has composed some amazing themes. But I, I work hand-in-hand -hand with him on that stuff. Just like we talked about when I had an, a concept for the FTR theme and they were in here, or Samoa Joe's, or even Adam Cole's. And uh, Mikey's composed all these great themes. We have a good partnership going. And uh, uh, in this case, that's music that Orange Cassidy had used, the theme that is being rumored on the internet for a long time. It's also why, unfortunately, like I love the people backstage and like, I, you know what's a cool? There were like, I was just talking about Brody. I didn't mean to keep going to it, but there were like a hundred people sitting in the stands in Daly's place when Amanda told us Brody was sick. I know there's a lot of new people here since then, but there were a lot of people here. And a lot of them are the same people, even though there's a lot of new faces and nobody said a word. So when it's something life or death, you can trust the people backstage. But I've learned that like around like a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff is leaked that like, it's like really shameful. And like people shouldn't be doing it. And that's one of those ones where it like screwed up what would have been maybe a pop, but also which is still be a huge pop. I mean, I'm still, it's things, these things are organic. So you can't make that not, it's gonna be a huge pop if it happens. But like the fact that like it even came up is dumb. 
And like, like I said to Sean, which is like, I was like, okay, I mean, if you're going to report it, I was surprised to read it. Cause I was like, I wonder why somebody leaked that. Cause like all it does is screw up a, a fun surprise for the fans. But it's like, I told Sean is I was like, we don't even have a hundred. We have, I have, as I understand it, 97.5% of the rights. But in this case, that's zero. I mean, like I might as well have zero. Like I, we're, we're real close. I've been told by the two and a half percent right holder that they are going to get back to us. And uh, it seems like it's going to, it seems like it'll probably happen. But like the fact that I'm even having to explain this, I think is ridiculous. And it's cause somebody in the back like shouldn't have said what they said. And then I was surprised, I like Sean, but I was surprised to see that. And I told him and I was like, cause it's not true. And I never even got a chance to refute it. And like, I know Orange said he was gonna have something new, but technically that's not even something new. I think he meant the belt. So like, uh, which he, you know, came damn close to winning. And like I said, uh, to the announcers and they made a, did a great job integrating orange cassidy is one of our best most marketable stars he's like he's you know whether people of all ages love him and on uh digital when you look at aw most watched digital videos on the youtube channel like like probably six or seven out of the top 10 involve him and he's also a really awesome person so if it does happen if we do get the 100 percent uh i'll be really happy because that's something he brought to the table before he was here there's been uh He's the, the AEW version of Orange Cassidy has really risen to prominence and he was already a beloved independent star, but I think his presentation and what he's become here is very different. And I think people respect and understand that he really is a great pro wrestler under the gimmicks. And now I really believed it tonight. He would tear the house down in Chicago like he did with Pac in his very first singles match, which we spent over six months and spent, I think about, I guess not quite six months. We were over five months of TV, five months of TV building to that, plus the pay-per-views before that. So over six months, really building up Orange Cassidy since All Out, that he never worked a singles match till he had that match with Pac and they tore the house down. Also unrelated, what a night for Pac, right? Like awesome for those two. And back in Chicago, I thought they both had, even though Pac won the title and, and Orange didn't, they had one of the best matches in the history of the company in Revolution 2020 and I was so happy. So you asked me about my reaction tonight and it was very similar to that. But now people weren't as surprised because in Revolution 2020, people were like, they knew, I think people were in interested in the match and it was like kind of, there was a lot of interest in the match, but I don't think people had the expectations yet of what he does. Now there's big expectations when on, on his matches and it delivered and no surprise to me. I, I believe in him so much. I'm just really grateful he's back. It's good timing for us to get him back. Uh, so thanks for asking. Of going last. All right. Uh, so, you talking about Claudio earlier mentioned that um, when you talked to Brian, you revealed to him that Claudio was already under contract. So, that says to me that you already had kind of creative plans for Claudio that maybe got, um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but that maybe got sidetracked a little bit. Well, I did. I had two plans. And I what I was saying was I called him the day after. Punk got hurt, and Brian was optimistic that he would be back, but I didn't want to, I wasn't 100% sure. So there were, there were a couple ways this could have gone, but certainly the idea that he might be at Forbidden Door had definitely crossed, was a, it came up. But it was, but if, I think we were all hoping Brian was going to be here. Uh, so, okay. So I guess going more forward with my question um, and talking about uh, some of the challenges you've encountered with Forbidden Door, with Punk getting hurt with Brian getting hurt um, and uh, just a lot of the creative changes that have had to take place. My question is more so about your overall booking philosophy and how much things may have changed over the last uh, really year for you um, in that one of the things that AEW was really known for in the beginning was kind of long term booking. And that's something that was very much commended, whereas these days, um, you almost circumstantially can't do a lot of that. And there's been a lot of uh, we get more announcements of matches like the day of Dynamite, for example, that we didn't get uh, back in the early days. We used to end a Dynamite kind of knowing every match that was going into the following week. Do you feel like your booking philosophy has had to change a lot in the last year or so with things that have gone on? And how do you feel um, you can sustain that going forward? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. And I, I think it changed a lot when we went back on tour Partially one of the reasons that you used to know everything going in was because we would tape it the next day. So uh, that wasn't like we were at, weren't at, but I think to most of the people who'd be watching this, people might've had an idea, but during the pandemic, 
when we were in Daly's place, it was live on Wednesday and then we were taped on Thursday. So it was a very different cadence and style. And then also Thursday, like I would have had 12 days to put everything together by the, you know, by the time the next show. So it was different and it was really great. But what happened was the roster grew a lot in that time. We went back on the road. We continued to expand. And within basically when we went back on the road, that's when I knew as soon as the fans were back, I'd been sitting on this opportunity that really CM Punk wanted to come back to wrestling and wrestle for AEW when the fans came back. It was just a matter of when we go back on the road. And then once that happened, he and I got really serious. And then all of a sudden, Brian Danielson and Adam Cole were up and that led to All Out 2021. It's crazy that at the end of the summer, it will be a year since that, but it's this, right now is a year that we've been back on the road this week. Blood and Guts represents about a year back on the road, almost exactly. And it's been challenging with all the injuries, but I still look to long-term solutions, long-term ideas, long-term thoughts. And if you look like Moxley and Tanahashi, even though it wasn't the original plan for the show, that's a long-term story that had been going for years. And I was thinking long-term when I didn't want to do Mox and Tanahashi last summer, it was looking ahead because I realized there was a, probably a bigger platform than the show where it was proposed to happen at in the parking lot of USC's football stadium. And so I thought there's a better place for this and I'm gonna be involved with AEW if that's gonna happen, Mox and Tana. And that was, uh, you know, it, it could have, it came close. The winner of Archer and Moxley was gonna defend against Tanahashi and Lance Archer pulled out his biggest win ever in the Texas death match at Fighter Fest in Texas. And so I was saved by the bell. Uh, but uh, I think that it was, like John said, it was for a reason. Like we, we held it back for a reason and it all came together. And just like with Claudio and he was a perfect guy at the perfect time and he was somehow available. And like, what are the odds of that? Because when we started this company, look at, imagine dealing with the people who are just injured right now. Like look at the people when we started this company who are out, not just here, but I mean like Kenny and Cody are both out. Imagine how we would have sustained that at the beginning, like Kenny and Cody being out, like we would have been screwed. And like now you had, look at who's not at this pay-per-view with the, the list of stars. And we still were able to do even with, you, you know, you could headline any pay-per-view ever with a list of people that were out on this pay-per-view. And the, the roster's so deep compared to where we started that we were able to sustain it. And it's a credit to all those people from, you know, that the list of people who are injured in pro wrestling right now, not just here, but like I mentioned, across, you know, other companies with Ishii and Hiromu not being able to come here and, and even WWE's got big stars, like I mentioned, who are out injured. And AEW's got the most prominent injured list probably in pro wrestling, but we've still got such a deep roster that uh, they came together and tonight's one of the best nights we've ever had. So long-term thinking, a lot of this has been long-term thinking, but it's like, you know, moving from piece to piece. I kind of alluded to it on the media call that originally Punk, I didn't even allude to it, I just told you guys. Punk was going to be in the trios, man. It would have been Punk and FTR, right? Against Osprey and the United Empire. It would have been totally different. Tanahashi would have been, Tanahashi wouldn't have been with Moxley. He wouldn't have been with the Blood and Guts people. He would have been with CM Punk if they'd wrestled, right? So I said on the media call, so imagine that. So th and then think about that, that like there would have been interaction with Tanahashi and Osprey probably, right? I would have done other stuff too. I had all kinds of stuff that we weren't able to do. That being said, it's long-term booking when you have Mox and Tana, that's something that you know, you, you know, not just like for a special day, you're not saving it for a rainy day, you're saving it for like a very special day when you need something very special. And this was that special day, Mox and Tana, they was just, they were the men of the moment. Claudio was a man of the moment. And so it fit in with our long-term plans, like this blood and guts we've been building to for so long ago. I mean, Chris and Eddie has, is a feud that goes back to the beginning of the year, back when, before Joey broke Eddie's face and uh, shut the feud down. And like, so that was in January and early January. And, and then Eddie couldn't fly or travel or come to the shows. And so it was, uh, this goes back to the, you know, like last year. And Chris and Eddie have been uh, at each other's throats for a long time. And they both changed. John's changed. So uh, we're in a different place now. It's a really good question. But uh, I, I think going back to live television, a lot of 
a new roster coming in and then those people getting injured change a lot of things. And I'll leave you with one last thought that's kind of takes this full circle, but it's like interesting stuff. It's all stuff I would have said to you guys. And I said to you, look at where we've come this year. You remember when Kenny first got hurt and uh, when Chris was out with the blood clot and John went in to treatment and the company was completely different. And we had just brought in CM Punk and Brian Danielson and Adam Cole, all as free agents. And I was saying at the end of the year, to anybody who would listen, thank God I had these three guys because they were, the, the, along with the, the CM Punk and MJF, the Brian Danielson and Hangman, and the Adam Cole and Orange Cassidy, and this peripheral stuff around it was carrying the TV week to week. Those three guys were in the three programs that carried the company through that time. And now look, and all three have had injuries and been out, and Cole came back tonight, and hopefully he's going to be able to come back soon from that. But, he, but I, you know, he, he, he uh, had been out, and this was his first match in a long time, and then Danielson and Punk have been out. And Mox came back better than ever. Chris came back. And we've had new faces come in and join the company that made a, you know, including now Claudio. And so I just think it's pretty cool how full circle it came because Chris – and John were out, they've come back, they both look totally different, they've both done this transformation, and then the people who came and helped fill that void, now they need the time, now they're beat up, and now these guys have stepped back in, the original, the first two champions, I just think it's really cool. I think, it come, so you talk about, again, long-term, full circle, being back here in Chicago, having John and Chris at each other's throats again, that's long-term too. And uh, I just thought it was really cool. So. Uh, it all came together, even if it wasn't the original plan for tonight. Everything tonight had been coming, so it was awesome. Thanks for all being here. People have traveled a long way to be here, a lot of you. Uh, and people from overseas, people uh, from the West Coast and all over the world. And, and AJ, I kept you up late once again, and, and you, you got a lot of locker room talk, but, uh, but by now you're probably used to it. All this was even for you. This is pretty, pretty extreme. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here, and I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone.